And queen takes f3. Oh, what is going wow. on? Oh, this is going to be a fortress. I just don't see any hopes at all. This is very easy. Just rook back and forth. Taking chess to the next level. Wow. Wow. Wow, yeah. Nothing has to say wow. Creating the future of the sport. Introducing the Champions Chess Tour. 10 months, 10 tournaments. The world's best players online and on TV. So let's take someone with a random, with a random account, with a random name that just seems attractive. Play live online against the world's top chess players while they stream their thoughts live. As a Chess24 Premium member, seize the chance to have your moment of fame. Get a peek inside their lives with question and answer sessions, in-depth teaching, analysis and interviews. The Champions Chess Tour, with countless accompanying events, is happening now. Tune in.
Hello everybody, so this is my Bounder Blitz again for Chess24. So yeah, let's play some games. I'm sort of sleepy today, so uh, I'll mostly play uh, with, with an increment as always. And let's start. I don't know, let's play. Um... Okay, let's play this guy. Uh, yeah, here it is. So, yeah, art something. All right, so he goes one c4. Let's go b6, maybe. B6 kind of makes sense if you want to confuse your uh, your opponent a little. I think Sasha Marzevich played it many times. Now, I don't know why I need the c5 at all, but okay, I played it so. Uh, now let's try to justify it some way. Maybe we go knight f6. And um, that's kind of tricky. So I, what I want to play is knight c6, but I think it runs into knight takes c4. Um, so maybe we just go bishop c5 or bishop b4. Yeah, whatever. Let's play bishop c5. So e3 is the idea as well sometimes. So if he will not be careful enough, then he could blunder this. Yeah, like here, for instance, we could take on f2, king takes f2, e3 check, and uh, like we have two checks and then we probably resign, but well, at least we tried. Now d4 is also kind of kind of a threat. Yeah, maybe I just go bishop b4 and then I take on c3 pretty much. Pretty much whatever he plays. Yeah, so now he's attacking e4. Which we could sacrifice actually, but we can also just take on c3 and castle then. So if we just castle knight takes e4 and we do something like like takes and d5, shouldn't be enough. Okay, let's just take on c3. And maybe maybe castle. All right, so now it's kind of kind of stable. So I just go c5 and then I want to play d5 at some point. Maybe I had to had to be more humble. Maybe I should have started with like d6 or rook8. c5 is sort of ambitious, but uh, yeah, maybe after some d4 I'll regret it a little. Okay, I'll not regret it, but maybe, yeah, maybe it's just better for white. Or maybe not. Yeah, so the thing is, let's say if we go d6, I don't think he really wants to play d5, but he wants to go like rook d1, bishop f4. And it will be sort of annoying. So maybe we just take on d4 here, or we even go d5. Okay, let's just take. Yeah, knight takes, and now we probably go d5. Or knight c6 first, I don't know. Okay, let's play d5. Let's just play moves, actually. Okay. So let me open the chat, which I will probably sort of ignore anyway, but just in case. Yeah, there is nothing too, too important there. Okay. 
So he plays b3, which kind of makes sense. So he wants to develop the bishop to b2 or maybe a3 even. Yeah, I think we have to, yeah, we have to trade as much as we can now. Otherwise, some bishop a3 followed by uh, knight b5 would be unpleasant. Yeah, he goes bishop b2, so now it's just slightly, slightly better for white, but it shouldn't be. I was about to say it shouldn't be dramatically bad for us, but maybe, maybe it is, maybe not. Let's just take and play, I don't know, rook c8. The queen goes to e7 probably. Yeah, rook, rook d1, we probably go to e7. Now in terms of ideas, yeah, this e3 stuff is back in some of the lines. Okay, let's just play it simple. Let's go bishop b7, take on c1, or maybe, or maybe just h6 even. Yeah, let's just play h6. Yeah, now we take and we probably play like rook d8. Yeah, so this is what uh, yeah what the whole Magnus Tor taught me to do. So you play like an idiot, but at least you don't collapse in like three moves. And you are also fine with uh with playing like an idiot. Like it used to be disappointing before, but then like after uh, three or four tournaments with all these guys, I'm sort of used to the fact that we all play badly. So it does not impress me anymore. Yeah, so bishop h3 kind of makes sense now. We probably, yeah, we probably will not give up h rank. So we go here. Um, yeah, now we probably go bishop h6. E3, maybe bishop e2. And bishop f3. Okay, he takes. Uh, so should I take here or I just ignore it? I probably ignore it actually. Yeah, let's say, I don't know, h5 or f5, maybe f5. So whenever he plays something like rook d5, uh, yeah, so, okay. Whenever he plays rook d5, we have this uh, rook c2 idea. And now we can play rook c2 as well. Okay, it's never a bad idea to repeat once. So now we probably go ahead. Okay, so we bring the rook to f1, I believe. Now we take, check. Yeah, so should I should I just take? Probably, yeah. King e5. Okay, h3, yeah, but we have an increment, which is, uh, which is kind of helpful. So I think we should win this sort of or maybe not, actually. Yeah, I obviously blundered this b5, after which... Uh, after which, objectively, it's probably closer to a draw, but of course we will try forever. Yeah, rook d6, maybe king g7 for now. And king g6, king h5. He goes here, which makes sense. Okay, rook e6. Goes h5, which is a bit nervous. So now we can probably play rook e4 check in some of the lines. Okay. Okay, what, what I'm doing is actually strange, but somehow he... 
he lost the track, it seems. So now we are just winning. Yeah, okay, that was a very stupid game by me, but, you know, once again, I got used to it. Um, what's next? Okay, let's play some really big guy. Sweet Harmony, 2900, wow. Okay, let's uh, go E4 then. Let's say E4 is a good move, so... We play good moves against good players. So what should I play here? Um, I don't know, can I play B4 here actually? I've never thought about it, but it kind of looks reasonable. He goes E5, okay, and then we go B5, I think. The bluff kind of worked. And probably, I don't know, bishop c4. Yeah. It is actually a strange position. I don't know how should I, how I should play this exactly. Maybe I go knight c3. And um, yeah, okay, let's go knight c3 and uh, wait for some bishop g4 to take on e5. That's the way we play. We play for cheapos. Okay, he did not blunder, which is bad. Okay, let's just go h3 to prevent bishop g4 then. And d3. Yeah, now we'll have to sort of play it simple, like castles. A4, knight d5 at some point. Yeah, he goes bishop e6, which allows many things, including uh, including knight g5, for instance. Yeah, I kind of like knight g5, actually. It's funny that sometimes in these situations you have knight takes e4 is black. And then after d takes, you have bishop takes c4, and after knight takes c4, you can play d5. Maybe it was not good here exactly, though. Okay, so he trades. Now we have this brilliant d5 square for the knight. So I guess... I guess it should be good for us. a6 is reasonable. So he, he's trying to yeah to come up with some counterplay there and we don't have a4, 8xb5, 8xb5 as um as uh, the rook is hanging. So I have to have to decide something about the pawn structure here. So it's either we just take on a6 and go rook b1, which I kind of like, or we just go a4, a b c b, which I don't like that much, but it's probably a better better option. Okay, let's go a4. And take. Still, I had some strange feelings that B takes was also was also quite reasonable. But this way, it is obviously much more standard. So I don't. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't play with double pawns. If he takes on B five, I go C takes, and uh, I don't have this problem anymore. So now I guess we just go Rook B one. Yeah, and now he allows a takes b5, which I think he shouldn't have allowed, actually. But maybe we can play c takes b5 still. I don't know what's better. Yeah, this is, um, this is a strange game, I must say. Okay, let's go. Yeah, I don't know. Let's go a takes, maybe. Yeah, so now, I mean, it was sort of strange. Now I have the double pawns on the other hand. If I, um, yeah, if I go c takes b5, then a4 is weak in many lines. Yeah, and this bishop d8 idea, which is, a, which is a nice idea in general, would be even more powerful after um, a takes b5. So now I think we should play it slow somehow. So we go queen d3. And now I think we go knight d1 which I kind of like, so I want to bring the knight to 
e3 at some point and then it will probably jump to f5 one day he goes queen e6 uh and the point is that he wants to take on f3 therefore i think i go knight h2 and if it's not a blunder we're actually threatening c3 trapping trapping the knight so he will probably just go back yeah but then we go knight e3 and I think we sort of outplay him here. Yeah, knight h5, we probably... Yeah, I don't know, knight d5 or uh, maybe this one belongs to d5. But where is my increment actually? So is it... Yeah, it is an increment, okay, fine. So I could just place this three trapping the knight, but I yeah, uh, I missed it once, but I don't miss it now. So he has to go f five, and it ridiculously works for him. Yeah, that is unpleasant. So should I take on h six now? Yeah, okay, whatever. Let's take and go. C takes d four. But now it obviously gets out of uh, gets out of uh, control. I mean, it could be still better for white, but I'm not that sure anymore, to be honest. Okay, I think he blunders again. Running into g4. After which I think white is just kind of winning. Yeah, so he's trying to bring the rook to g8 which I think we should survive. Yeah, maybe bishop f4, bishop g3. We're also threatening knight f6 check, by the way. Yeah, this should be just that lost. Also, I am obviously capable of uh, messing up pretty much any position. Maybe not this one though. Yeah, here is Ions. Okay, thanks for the game. Yeah, I think we kind of uh, we kind of played uh, we kind of played a very smart sequence of moves with this knight h2 and all this maneuvering. I think we, we outplayed him, outplayed him, but then I blundered the f5. After which, I mean, maybe it was still better for white, but we shouldn't have allowed this. Okay, we will um, we'll improve. Doesn't matter. So let's play Mister Yup. I think I play him. Um, yeah, play him every single time doing Bunter Blitz. 1e4, so what do we... Okay, let's go c5. Let's play the Knight of actually. Bishop b5 check. Okay, this is not inspiring. So what do they play here? They normally go Knight d7. Let's try Knight c6. I think it's considered to be not a brilliant option, but I don't know why exactly. So what is the theory here? Is it bishop d7? Yeah, maybe it is bishop d7. Mm -hmm. So what is this exactly? So this bishop g4 is probably some big theory. Can we just go e5 here? Okay, let's go e5. Yeah, and I thought about g5 for a moment. Okay, it doesn't look completely stupid, so let's do this. I mean, it should be just a bad move, but it's not... Uh, I mean, it's not idiotic. It kind of makes sense, it just doesn't work. In general, this g7, g5 advance makes sense qu quite often in this um, yeah rule of structures let's say in the in the rule weapons, I think after bishop b5 like d6 castles bishop d7 rook e1 or c4 you can just go g5 and you're uh, perfectly fine it kind of i mean it kind of makes sense strategically so so it's not about checkmating attack but it's just uh, that 
Black is trying to go g4, force the knight to go away, and then, uh, yeah, it becomes much more difficult for uh, for white to get d4. Yeah, he goes d3, but then we sort of get what we want. We can just go g4, and after knight d2, we just play the game. We can also play h6 and play it simple. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we have a single reason not to play g4. Okay, let's go g4. So now it's either we just go h5, h4 and try to checkmate or we play it slow. Yeah, I don't even know how how exactly he will uh, he will develop the pieces. We can even go b5 just preventing uh, preventing knight c4. And sort of asking him for uh yeah let's go b5 i just want to see how he will develop the pieces he goes a4 which i don't think i mean it's perfectly reasonable but i don't think it will help much maybe we go rook b just to keep the rooks takes takes now maybe knight a3 or something Yeah, he goes knight b3, which is, I mean, it looks ugly, but it's sort of reasonable. So it was uh, the only square available for the knight, and then he wants to go bishop e3 or d4, yeah. But I think we'll checkmate sort of faster than he will finish the development. Yeah, d5. Or maybe we will not. I think we go knight e7. And then we just uh, bring everybody to the king side. Like we go, like we go bishop h6 maybe. Takes takes, and we go like h4, knight g6, queen g5, and checkmate, or not. But preferably yes. B3. So can I go h4, or I? I mean, maybe I simply take b3, and I don't care. But let's say h4, b takes c4. Okay, it's, it's yeah, it's way too tempting actually. So b takes c4, we just go g3. And we sort of say good luck. So if you want to play facing such stuff, then you really need to be brave. Okay, so this allows queen b6 check intermediate, which I think we uh, we should include. And king h1 looks like the only move. Yeah, so now we can uh, think anything queens here. Okay, let's start with knight g4. So he has to play something like rook a1 or uh, rook a2, I mean, or rook a2 or something, but then we just take on g3 and win. Yeah, this was kind of a decent game for uh, for the banter blitz. So, is there something fancy? I mean, I can just go knight f two and uh, win like an idiot. But is there is there something really cool? Maybe we go knight f two and then we probably can probably we can take on h three here. I mean, it's probably a bit of, uh, I mean, a bit of showing off, but I think it works. There is nothing wrong with, okay, let's take whatever. Queen takes f2 was also winning, obviously, but I just want to come up with some, some kind of combination. Yeah, so now we take bishop g2 runs into rook takes h3. Yeah, and this runs into many things like this one, for instance. Okay, thanks for the game. Um, Who else we could play?
this guy. So he's 2800. Let's go d4 respectfully. And knight f3. He goes g6. Yeah, g6 is a good move, I must. I must admit. Uh, what could we play here? Let's just play something um something solid like bishop f4, e3, h3, bishop h bishop h2, you never lose too quickly. That's what I thought at least. Yeah, castle. So how do they play here? Like h3 or yeah, let's say we go h3. So you normally need this h2 square for the for the bishop to face some uh, some random knight h5 ideas by by going to h2 so now after d5 we sort of change the plan and we um just play in the most as the most stupid possible way so normally i think they go d6 and then you have to be really smart like bishop c4 sometimes instead of bishop e2 and stuff but here i think this is just better for us I think there is even a line where white plays bishop c4 just to provoke d5 and then he plays bishop e2 back and uh, he's sort of a tempo down comparing to, to the current game and still happy. So this should be just a perfect version for us. The problem is that we are not Magnus. And like I know that it's a perfect version but I still don't really understand um, how to play this exactly. Like sometimes they go b4, but okay, let's just finish the development. It shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad. Okay, let's castle. Shouldn't be too bad either. He goes knight c6. So what's wrong with uh, with black's position? Why is it such a good version? Maybe we go knight e5 for now. For instance, after a5, he cannot really play b5 as c5 is hanging. He goes knight e4, trying to trade as many things as possible. But I don't think we should uh, we should avoid that. Okay, let's just allow him to do this. Let's just take. Now I think we take. And then we go a5. Or maybe we take on c5. No, I think we go a5. So once again, in terms of strategic stuff, white is kind of better because his bishop on b7 is uh, much worse than our bishop on a2. But who really cares about strategic stuff? Like normally you just go queen takes d4, then you go cd, and then if you're Magnus, you win. If you're Magnus, but if you're not, then I mean, then it doesn't look too scary for black, I would say. Let's do this anyway, whatever. like b5 and then you have to find some miraculous way to use his uh his weak pawns on b4 and uh, a6 which will probably never happen but okay you can try like we will play rook c5 at some point then we'll bring the king it's also true that it's kind of unpleasant to play such a position as black because it's never like it's never exactly equal, so you're trying to make a draw, but I mean it's it's obviously very close to a draw, but at the same time it's never. Uh, I mean it's never simple, so you have to sit and wait, and basically you you can be you you can be tortured forever. 
like there is no really um there is no really a plan even that could uh sort of lead to to equality here so normally black just brings the, the king to maybe d6 and then he waits or he takes, yeah, but this is also risky. We probably go d takes c5. And once again, he will have to pray that we don't have uh, some breaking through idea. Okay, let's play h4. I think it should be normal anyway. So you normally put your pawns on dark squares when uh, when you have a light squares bishop. So he goes e5, which I think is a mistake. Okay. Yeah. Don't know. Should work. Yeah, just finish the game. Okay, so this was a draw. Thanks to a brilliant chess twenty four staff who made me. Um, yeah, who who made me do something else being to five seconds, but it's probably a draw anyway. So it's not a big deal and good game for... Uh... That's quite challenging. Puyli Fume or something. So what is uh, uh, what is the correct way to, to spell it? So let's... Um, yeah. Let's go further. Once again, D4. Knight of six. Okay, let's try bishop g5 this time. I think it's called Trampovsky opening. There is also a funny joke that uh, Magnus played it in the first game of the World Championship ma match against Karakin because Trump be uh, became a president. So he probably wanted to praise Trump this way, playing Trampovsky opening. Okay, knight e4 is the main move, I believe. Let's go bishop h4. I think it's considered to be really bad because of like g5 or something. But as far as I know, people start to trying it again. Like this g5, f3, g takes h4, f takes e4, c5 was considered was considered to be just bad for white. But I think they kind of start to trying it again. Don't know if it's reasonable though. Yeah, bishop h6, so why would they why would they like it? 
I don't know. Well, do we do we protect E3 or we just start doing some crazy things like Queen H5, Bishop C4? Yeah, it's hard to say what's better. Okay, let's try to play something really stupid like Queen H5. And bishop c4. I mean, at least we're threatening checkmate. At least we managed to get this far. Yeah, e6, and then I thought we just go knight c3. Which, once again, is probably, is probably bad for white. But it kind of makes sense. It's not exactly idiotic. C takes d4, we go knight b5, then we go knight f3. We kind of manage to develop the pieces and yeah. Then we'll have ideas, I believe. He goes a6, preventing knight b5, which makes sense. But now it's really Tricky, like we can go queen, queen e5 runs into bishop takes d4, yeah. So what I wanted is a uh, queen e5 followed by knight d5. Maybe we'll get it later. Like he plays c takes d4 now, for instance, and then we can play queen e5. Attacking a shade. And he has to do something. Yeah, he castles. That's why I probably. I mean, maybe I should have played something like knight e5 instead. But even this is not that simple. Okay, we just. I think we just retreat. He will probably play knight c6, I believe. There is nothing wrong with that, yeah. And we go queen h5. Now it feels like it kind of makes sense to play queen a5 checks to trade queens here. Because otherwise I think we'll just take on a3, castle short, and then we try to create some sort of an attack. Maybe this will never happen actually, but still I feel like it's, uh, it's promising. So this is a really strange move. Okay, I guess we take. Now we castle either way. I don't know what's say we castle long. And we start collecting collecting stuff. So let's say we take we take here. Uh, so now not a five is also a threat. He has to be precise, like queen g7, maybe. But even there, it's obviously very, very comfortable for white. He goes queen f7, which is also legal. So, yeah, we probably just go back for now. Ninety five, so we can play ninety five here. We can also sort of ignore his play and go bishop b three. I kind of like ninety five though. Yeah, then we bring the knight to d six, which I think is an improvement. And then we just play like queen takes c three, or maybe even king b one to. Uh, to prevent a queen trade. Yeah, king b1 kind of looks normal. And bishop b3. 
Rook B, so he's trying to, to create some kind of an attack. The queen side, which I expect to fail, but who knows. Okay, let's take, he'll probably go e5. No, he goes bishop b7. This is logical. So we should probably start attacking um, f6 somehow. Like rook d2. Yeah, so here we probably just play like a3 or maybe a3. Yeah, he goes before. Maybe I'm getting outplayed, but I'm I'm not sure to be honest. Like it's not exactly an attack. He, he's doing something, but then we just go before. And what do you want exactly? I mean, this bishop on the six sort of prevents him from doing something good, so that's why. Okay, let's go g4. I think we are fine with the queen trade in general. So now the, the plan is to is to run the pawns. Okay, collect one when you get a chance. Okay, takes, takes. Now it should be just lost for him. And this is checkmate, I believe. Yeah. Okay, this was sort of tense once again. It was far from uh, from a brilliant level from us, but the, the position was not that easy to play, I must say. Okay. Uh, so now let's... Um, let's drop the standard a little. And play someone... Um, yeah, someone who will have to who will have to yeah gain like one thousand of points more to you know be consistently consistently dangerous for us but in one game we could lose anything I would say and we could lose it to anyone as well. So the Catalan why am I doing this? Okay let's go knight the string. But at least he knows the theory, which is already unpleasant. C5. So C5 is not the move here, I guess, but I don't remember why exactly. Like it's C takes D5 or uh, D takes C5. I don't know what's better. Maybe D takes C5 is better. Or maybe nothing is wrong with that at all. Okay, d4 is a pawn blunder. And we take it happily. Yeah, bishop takes c5, but then it's a healthy pawn for white anyway. Which I think we should be capable of converting. Yeah, so let's play it simple, just a3. Let's say castles. Rook d1. Yeah, I don't know how to... Like, it's obviously kind of loss for black. But I don't know what's the cleanest way to win this. Like normally you you just play a game and then it wins itself. But when you're trying to be kind of dogmatic and uh, sort of set an ambition of winning a clean game, it never works normally, at least in my case. Uh, yeah, okay, we have many good moves here. We can just take and play knight c5. Yeah, maybe this is the way. 
I'm not a big fan of what uh, what I've been doing in this game, but okay. You don't uh, sort of spoil this kind of an advantage uh, playing uh, solid moves. So unless we blunder c4, we're fine. So now I guess we can take here, then we take d1, rook b8, and then we calculate something like knight d6. Yeah, so knight d6 or knight takes, uh, bishop takes a 6 and then knight a5. Both look, both look convincing actually. Okay, let's go knight d6. So the point is rook takes b2, knight takes a8 followed by bishop takes a6. Uh, so he has to do something else, but there is not much to do really. Yeah, so he goes into tank, but yeah, this would not help normally. I mean, unless we blunder heavily. So it's not even about blundering like one pawn, it's about blundering a rook. There is also, yeah, an, an alternative version of, yeah, here's Ains, okay. So I was about to say that I could, uh, yeah, I could have disconnected as well, which started to happen from time to time. Uh, okay, let's go back to playing the stars. Where are the stars though? Okay, there is one, uh, Fide Arena Grandmaster. Okay, let's play this guy. Should be fun. He's 2700 and he's probably a Fide Arena Grandmaster. So I guess you can get this um, a sort of strange titles on, uh, on Fide Arena these days. And they call it Grandmaster as well, which is, I think, a little bit weird. But okay, whatever. One day we'll have, uh, you know, 30 seconds per game Green Masters. And it's coming anyway, so I should probably just accept it. Yeah, mean po meanwhile, yeah, I played the Dragon and he, he opted for this quiet line with a casting short. Which is considered to be harmless, as far as I know. So we normally take on d4, go bishop e6 and rook c8. And then we try to kind of act accordingly. So let's say f5, we normally play bishop c4. And then, then sometimes uh, we have uh, tactical ideas. And sometimes we don't. I think I'm brilliant in, uh, you know, in talking about the position. Like some, sometimes it work. Sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah. Should I? Once again, sometimes you go e5 in these lines, and sometimes it works. Maybe it works here. Maybe not. Let's try to find out. He just plays bishop e3, which is logical. Uh, 
so then what I wanted to do in terms of ideas was to take on a four and just attack e4 somehow. So maybe that's what I have to do in terms of moves as well. I can also consider something like b5 followed by b4. Yeah, I don't know how to play this game, to be honest. Um, I mean, it all looks kind of natural to me. B5 is, is normal. E takes F4 is normal. Like, even D5 could be the move sometimes. Can we actually go D5? Bishop takes C4, Rook takes C4, E takes D5. And then we do something. I mean, we have some compensation, but it's probably not enough. B5 is also sort of logical. Okay, let's go B5. Yeah, then he goes A3 and all the stuff I was thinking about makes zero sense. Okay, let's go A5 to get it back. Now I'm probably running into something like f takes e5, then he takes on d8 and goes bishop b6. For instance, no, he doesn't. Okay, then we just go b4. And, and at least it doesn't look uh, completely idiotic from black now. Now we probably go d5 trying to to confuse him even more. And it all starts to feel like, uh, yeah, like a very decent scenario for black. He probably, uh, yeah, probably he, he should have played knight a4 instead of knight d1, then some knight b6 would be in there as well. Also, maybe we, we could still go d5 there, who knows. This is a strange, uh, yeah, strange. Kind of a pawn structure, an opening, and everything. This is just strange itself. Yeah, now it's his turn to to sort of think for a while. So he takes on before. Um, knight takes e4 is obvious reply. There is also knight g4 maybe. Mm. Okay, let's take a pawn. This should be kind of normal. He takes, wow, well, this actually allows bishop takes f1. Which we don't need dramatically, but I just don't, don't understand what's wrong with it. Okay, let's say we take. So now we are just ahead, right? We have a, we have an extra exchange, I believe. So I can just take on e4 or I can show off with something like rook c4. Okay, I'm not going to miss a chance to show off. So yeah, we go rook c4 and rook takes c4, which is probably, which is probably uh, it's the best reaction anyway, so. When the stylish move is also the, the best move, it's always nice kind of a situation to be in. Yeah, rook takes e3, rook takes e4, pardon, takes, bishop takes e5. Now we have some uh, attacking ideas as well, like queen h4 or rook h4. Maybe we go queen h4. So h3 runs into bishop g3. Into queen g3, so he has to play g3, and then, yeah, then we have many moves. Bishop takes g3 is okay, queen h3 is also normal. Yeah, I think we go queen h3. Now, if one is hanging, and uh, 
there is no queen g2 or queen f2 as uh, the queen has to protect h6. Yeah, so he goes here, which is probably correct. And um, knight f2 is a threat. Maybe we go rook d4 here. Yeah, rook d4. Now we take on h6. And sort of win it in a quiet way. Yeah, thanks for the game. Uh, what else do we have here? Okay, let's try to play, this will be really challenging. So let's try to play this uh, 2900 guy. And this is no, no, no increment game as well. So I'll have to, I have to play fast. He doesn't play moves though, so maybe I'll just avoid this game. I also don't know why, why exactly, but for some reason my, uh, I mean, I don't know if, if you can see it, but my uh, blitz rating jumped to 4,000. Which feels like I was probably, I don't know, hacked or something. 1e4, okay. Let's go e5 and play fast. Remove knight c6, okay. Remove knight f6, bishop e7, castle, d6. Let's try to flag the guy from move one. Okay, bishop e6, takes, takes. h6 and d5. Yes. Okay, so he wants to play this nonsense with g4 probably, which I don't think we need to prevent. Um, okay, we're ahead on the clock at least. Let's go d4, trying to clarify what the intention is there. He probably has to take, we go knight takes d4, knight takes, e takes d4. And then it's kind of, kind of a strategic mess, I would say. Otherwise, we just take on c3 at some point, and then we go b5, b4. Let's read the chat. Okay, takes, takes. And he goes a3, I guess we go c5. And then we go c4 if we get a chance. Okay, so I can gamble here. I can go c4 and then sacrifice. Okay, just for you guys. Let's do this. But I don't need to sacrifice, sadly. So what I was talking about is f5, bishop takes f5, e takes f5, bishop h4 check. Then g3 runs into rook 8, so he has to play king d1. We still go rook eight and it's, I mean, probably good for white, but it, I mean, at least it's a mess. Now I realize that after f5, there is just c takes d3. So he takes on c4 first. We go knight c5, threatening d3. He goes here. Yeah, maybe we go rook c8. Threatening knight takes d3 followed by bishop uh, takes c4. So now knight d2 runs into bishop h4 check, probably. Yeah. Okay. King f1. Yeah, now we probably. Yeah, now we probably sink a little. So queen c7 looks very, uh, very strong to me. Bishop g3 looks strong as well. In terms of ideas, I could also consider uh, consider playing f5. But maybe it's a bit too early. So after queen c7, he probably goes f5, and then we probably take on f5, right? Okay, whatever. Why would I think for that long? Okay, let's sacrifice it.
Yeah, so I thought we go rook e8, then he probably, yeah, probably plays knight e4, and we have many moves here. Uh, we can take on d3 and play queen e5. We can also play something like queen c6 right now, which is probably a very good idea, by the way. Yeah, I like it. Let's do this. So now, I mean, it's not only knight takes e4 that is a threat, but also knight takes d3, followed by uh, queen or rook takes e4. Yeah, he goes here, so I think this is exactly where we prefer to take on d3, not on e4. And we take queen f3, but this should be just bad, I believe. Okay, let's bring uh, the rook to e8. I could actually take on c4, but okay, whatever. Uh, so how should I win this? Rook e1 check, is it enough? Should be enough, I believe, yeah. Yeah, takes, takes. Now we take on f3. And play rook e2 check and go d3. This looks completely lost to me. d2 is a threat. After rook h2, I think we just take and play bishop g5 and promote, right? Yeah. Yeah, we go bishop g5, so he's not in time to to stop the pawn takes takes and d2 wins. Yeah, this was a, a, a very nice game actually by us. Okay, thanks for the game. This was kind of nice. So now let's uh, go back to playing uh, stupid games with an increment. Um, let's play someone, someone less, uh, Oh, it's brilliant. I don't know what's uh, the right word. Like this guy, for instance, who has a who has a photo of Sasha Morozevich as his picture, which brings him right into the stream. But maybe it's just Sasha. Actually, he plays this G six stuff. Wow, now I'm nervous. Okay. I'm really nervous now. Okay. Yeah, this is Sasha. Okay, now we we know it for sure. So we play Alexander Morozevich here, which is unpleasant, I must say. I wanted it to be a safe game, not this nonsense. Um, so how should I play this? Knight b5 or what? I think it was actually me who, who told him that this queen b6 makes sense, but I don't even remember what was wrong with it. Yeah, maybe knight b5. And maybe bishop d2, but okay. I'm not, not a big fan of what I'm doing here. Um, can I play bishop c3 and then knight f6 e5? Maybe I can. Yeah, so knight f6, e5, he probably wants knight h5. And uh, yeah, and there is nothing wrong with it, unfortunately. That is unpleasant. Hmm. Maybe it's not yet too late to sort of sort of switch for playing stupidly. Like bishop d3, and then we say, okay, it's not, it's not brilliant anymore. But this is not the way we want to play. Hmm. Okay, I'll have to, you know. I'll have to admit he's more talented than me. So he sort of faced me to 
uh, to prove that he is better and he he's about to so he will probably take with a with a bishop I would say yeah now both moves make sense okay ed is kind of more ambitious I believe don't know why I need to be ambitious here I mean it's not that I'm trying to prove that I'm better okay after e6 I think it's kind of uh I mean, it's kind of comfortable for white again. Yeah, so black is black is probably fine as well, but at least, like in terms of strategic factors, it's uh, it's black who can be risking something here. In general, this e6 pawn is weak, and he will probably spend the rest. I don't know, or maybe both, like here. Okay, let's go c5. He probably wants to play this uh, e5, e4 at some point, which I could allow, or I could play knight takes d4 simply. Okay, let's take the pawn. I guess we can just take on a6. Maybe I'm wondering something, but uh, that's how it feels. Queen takes c5, knight takes c6. I don't see what's wrong with it. Yeah, he goes here, then I thought it's queen c4 checks that is a problem. And now we get knight b5, let's say. Yeah, and then we take and queen d6 and we win. Okay. This was tense. Um, okay, let's just take the rook, whatever. I don't need to show off here after such a nervous game. Okay, c6, and then we run the pawn. Okay, takes. Trade as many thing, things as you can. Okay, a6. We win. Yeah. Rook, I don't know, e4. But there is an increment. Why would you play this? I mean, it's just the lost. Yeah. Don't know if it was him, actually. But I think the level... Uh... Who was this guy? Maybe I, maybe I simply... Chickened for no reason. Maybe this was not Sasha. But at least, I mean, he has Sasha's uh, Sasha's photo as a profile, and uh, he played Sasha's opening as well. And this was not, uh, you know, this was not a typical opening. So this was kind of Sasha's uh, pet opening. So I don't know what was that exactly, but why would we care? Okay, let's continue. Let's play C4 this time. Uh, and maybe knight f3, g3. g6, then you normally go b3 and you're kind of... kind of slightly better here. Because of, I don't know what, by the way, but they say white is slightly better here. Yeah, bishop g4, this is a standard plan, so you just give up the bishop on f3. Go e6, and then white has two bishops and a slightly better position, but black is extremely solid, and you can just chill forever. Yeah, he kind of tries to play it in a in a more ambitious way, which is probably possible as well. Also, I don't know what's the what's the point exactly. Like, let's say takes takes. So, do you really want to play e5 here? Wow, he does. Okay. Then I guess we take. So now it's important that the knight is on d7. With the knight on b8, you never want to take on d5 because then after cd, the knight will end on c6. But this d7 square is not ideal, they say. And that's why you you're normally better as white when you get c takes d5 with the black knight on d7, not on c6. I 
I actually made a mistake. Yes, yeah? this, this guy is not a premium user, as you pointed as you pointed out correctly in the chat. Sorry, guys. Okay. I'll, I will try not to repeat this mistake again. Still, it's not that I will now abort abort the game and text him. You're not premium, so you know, go have rest. And so I will play. Rook c7 looks normal. Don't know if we need it though, but it's kind of a logical, logical way to continue the game. So now it's not only rook takes b7 that is a threat, but also knight or bishop takes c5, maybe bishop takes c5. Uh, so he has some queen d6, rook takes b7, queen c6, or knight c5, something, but at very least, we have queen d6, queen c1. Yeah, he goes to b4 just to protect uh, b7. This is logical, so I was going to play queen d2 here. I think we are happy to trade queens. And if he plays queen b6, then we just play rook f to c1. And we have all the, yeah, all the pieces in play. Yeah, I think we should be kind of much better here. He goes e4. So let's include bishop d4 just to make sure we we are not blundering some stupid e3 or something like that. And then we can, uh, you know, go. 90, 91 calmly and you know play, play the game but this would be this would be interesting actually could you guys google this uh this guy whom we suspected of being morozovich actually how, how many games did he play like if he if he has lost a lot of games then it's probably not sasha but it could be that it's just his random nickname where he played like, you know, 20 games and won 18. Then our uh, suspicions would make more sense. Okay, I can play queen b2 here. I can also play rook c6, which I probably will. Yeah, people in the chat say he, he's not Morozovich. They uh, checked it and he has played a lot of games. And this is his real rating. Okay. Then I was just uh, way too, you know, way too, uh, too impressed by his photo and uh, three moves. So I chickened out. It happens. So what is this exactly? So I will not blunder the, the knight only one. Is there a difference how I do this? Like I can play bishop c3. Yeah, maybe I play bishop c3. Okay, as simple as that. So now at very least I can uh, take on f6 twice. And I can also try to, to say that it's not even it's not even enough for such a good position to to get an exchange. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I take only for first anyway. And now I can just play like knight, you know, c2. Or I just take on f6 after all. Okay, let's take whatever. Maybe I had something better, but this is definitely very bad for black. Yeah, we take one e4, go bishop d5, and win. Or rook takes f7, we have many good moves. Okay, let's play bishop d5, for instance. Yeah, and then we take and B it is hanging, right? Yeah, he resigns. 
Thanks for the game, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fighter 3000, but make sure to buy the premium membership. Not to not to be forced to sneak in this uh, banter blitzes this way. All right, so who else? Okay, let me play the guy who I think uh, Google this this uh, potential moral just to say thank you. First of all, so I am the real Magnus. So this guy. Uh, has my photo as a picture and the nickname I am the real Magnus. I don't know about him, but I'm not. So why would he, you know, use my picture with a nickname I am the real Magnus? Okay, what should I play here? Let's go on C5. This is something I definitely should not play here, but why would we care? Yeah, d5, maybe we go b5. Mm. Yeah, I think we go g6 here. This was my favorite line. I mean, it's black when I was like, I don't know, 16 or something. So I would normally play it in every single game. And it was also funny that the line is actually bad itself. And many people knew why exactly, but I did not. And I, play, I played it in the highest level as well. Like, I think I played it in a very important game against Fetugov. And he simply couldn't believe that I could be, you know, that stupid to play it like 10 times in a row against Grandmasters and still still means the, uh, the fact that there is a refutation. But I was that stupid. So he kind of underestimated my stupidness. Okay, so now we probably just ignore this, uh, this threat of bishop takes b5 and just castle. also if he wants to take it, we let him do this. He wants to take it, that is sad. Okay, let's play queen b6. So now, yeah, now we probably have full, full compensation anyway. Yeah, queen b3, but this probably allows some, something fancy. So can I take on d5 and take on b5? and sacrifice it. Yeah, I probably can. Let's do this. So the point is queen takes d5, queen takes b5, queen takes a8, and then we probably include bishop a6, and then we go knight c6 and trap the queen. Okay. So what's wrong with it? I don't see it, to be honest. Maybe I got lucky one time and there is nothing wrong with it. He obviously has bishop takes a seven as well, but this is not something that would, uh, that would prevent me from, from doing this. So bishop takes a seven, bishop h6. Looks very nice for black. Yeah, he goes queen b3, humble enough. Now we have... Uh, I mean, it's obvious that black is in a perfect shape here with two bishops and everything. But is there a way to... To create a mess somehow. Maybe there is a way. Maybe we go like queen. Let's say c6. 
And then if he takes on a seven, we just go rook eight and bishop a six there. He will probably castle though. And then there is no mess. It's just slightly better for black, but we are not satisfied with the level of you know messness. What I want what am I talking about? I don't know. Um So can we play, I don't know, bishop b7 just to gamble at least in some way? I also don't know why, why I need to sacrifice something that much. Okay, let's just play one normal move in a row. Shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, maybe we just switch, switch for playing uh, Boring strategic game, which is obviously, which is obviously not such a big mistake here, as Black has two bishops and um, yeah, all the chances to win eventually. Somehow I still want to to somehow get some mess out of this. Maybe I just go f5 and then g5 and at least try to, to to entertain myself this way. Like g5, e5, f4 and so on. Yeah, so there is no g5 as f5 would be hanging. So we probably go e5 or, uh, or we just slow down a little. Yeah, maybe we slow down. Let's play rook f8. Yeah, the point was to get uh, e4, f4. So now that, uh, is that the pawn is protected, white is just lost. That's why I played rook f8. Yeah, he has to sacrifice, but then it's just completely lost. Yeah, let's say knight e5. And now we just bring everybody, everybody back, like bishop c, bishop g4. Yeah. Okay, I guess we take, take. Um, is bishop d4, e5 a problem? Probably not. Yeah, now I guess we go e5 just to, you know, have this bishop on d4 forever. Okay, then we bring the rook here. And checkmate somehow. Yeah, he resigns. Thanks for the game. Thanks for the help as well. With this uh, Moro case. Mm -hmm. For some reason, most of the you know most of the highest highest rated players are not premium members. Don't know why. And also most of the premium members whom I want to play want me to play without increment, which is a mistake. And that's why I'm kind of looking for a challenge from strong guys and who who, who want to play with increment and I'm sort of left with, uh, with zero. Okay, let's play this guy. I think he's... Um, He's quite a strong player. I think I played him. He's probably Russian. He's a premium member and he's uh, slightly below 2800. D4, H6. Okay, this escalated quickly. G5. Okay, let's play the bone cloud just to, you know, do something stupid in return. Okay, now we play a game. I don't think. Uh, yeah, I don't think he favored a lot from this. Also, maybe he did. I don't know. Okay, let's just take. Let's try to, you know. Wow, queen d6. <laughs> so, was it a pre move or. 
or a misclick or uh, something else. I don't know. How should I play this? Maybe knight a3. Yeah, let's say queen b3, just, you know. So after playing king e2, sometimes you have to play like a chicken. So I'm fine with a queen trade. I actually did not quite get why everybody is so, uh, like, emotional about this do a double bone cloud draw between Magnus and Hikaru. Like, some people criticize them, some people praise them, but in general, I mean, come on, it's just, you know, one game out of many, and people just and decided to kind of joke a little. I mean, maybe it was not funny, or maybe it was, but in general, it's not a big deal anyway. That's the way I uh, think about it. Okay, now at least I managed to trade queens. So I will not lose this quickly, probably. But I still have a fair chance of losing this slowly. Okay, so I want to bring the king to the corner finally. That's why I go rookie one and uh, king f1, but maybe I just start by playing knight c4. Yeah, now I want to play knight is three, as simple as that. So there is no king f1 because of uh, bishop d3 check, obviously. So he goes here. Okay, I can just go king f1, right? And he plays e5. <laughs> So, okay, at very least I can just trade everything. I think it would be slightly better for white, but not that much. I could also take on d5 and play this version. So what is better? Yeah, maybe there is no big difference actually and I'm just waiting time. Okay, let's say we take this way. So he will probably take on g2 anyway. Okay, he takes on e3, whatever. There is no real difference. I remove d takes, obviously. Yeah, but then let's say he takes and we go rook d1. I don't think it's uh, completely equal. Like it's very close to a draw, but it's a little bit uncomfortable for black. His bishop is stupid, his pawn structure is not ideal. Rook d7 is coming as well, so he has to be a little bit precise here. Like maybe rook e7 first. Okay, he plays this way. That's a bit strange, okay. Yeah, okay, so let's, um, let's take the line first. He plays... Yeah, maybe what he plays is kind of reasonable. But it's still, I mean, it's still a little bit a little bit better for white. Okay, so now we probably take go king g4 and rook e1. Yeah, but then we go king h5 and bring the king there. Now we can play h4 for instance. Yeah, he takes, which is a bit strange. Okay, let's just take back and go rook d1 and go back to h5. And now I think we can just take and uh, we probably win this. Yeah, but then we have to uh, two connected pawns, which is normally enough. He, he also has two, two connected pawns, but our pawns will be faster, of course. 
Yeah, there we are. Okay, thanks for the game. I think I played this guy in some Russian Junior Championships or something, and it was, it was never easy. Um, okay, let's play Dangerous Right. I think I played this guy many times as well. Maybe I actually failed to, to accept the challenge. Let me try again. Yeah, there we go. Okay, make a move. No, I actually was, it's uh, 4,000 something. I'm back to my 31K. This is depressing, but at least I felt like a star for, for like, I don't know, maybe one hour. So that, that was probably, that was probably, yeah, I mean, a server, a server mistake. It was still nice. I mean, I was like four four thousand five hundred. How about that? Huh? Yeah, this is the one I normally fail to fail to um, play well. But I think bishop e two is kind of a mistake. So they normally play c takes d five there because this is considered to be kind of harmless, I believe. Also, I don't know why exactly as well. Maybe just knight c6. So we wait for c takes d5, and now we take on c3 and take on d5. And maybe it is kind of okay for black. We'll just prepare uh, prepare uh, e5 and go for it. Yeah, like now maybe. Go c4, which I shouldn't have allowed. So queen e4, d5, makes zero sense. Um, can I go queen a5? Yeah, maybe I can. So the point is, takes takes d takes c5 is not something we are really worried about. Okay, white is a pawn now, but I don't think white is even better. We'll just play rook eight. All the pawns are weak. Yeah, and d5 kind of makes sense, but at least it's an ending. And we have uh, some some reasons to keep optimism as well. Maybe we go b6, then knight b7, knight c5. Or maybe we just play rook c8 and then kind of attack c4 with a uh, with all the pieces we have. Okay, f6 shouldn't be a mistake anyway, I guess. One day we could just blunder the spawn. So the, the reason I did not protect it was uh, knight takes e5, rook a8, and then we probably win a piece in most of the lines. But, but still, it was a little bit shaky to rely on that for uh, really long. So. I decided to play f6, okay. Rook c8. So now we'll just improve slowly. Like rook c7. d6 is not an issue, I believe. We just take them. Also, maybe I just go rook d8 first, just to never, never uh, consider rook c7, d6. Then I think at some point we go probably bishop d7, f5, king f6. The bishop can go to a4 at some point. I could actually tell you many stories about this position while he's thinking, but none of them will, uh, will turn into reality, I'm afraid. 
He played g3, which I ignored completely. Now I start to think that he probably wants to play four. Still, maybe, I mean, there was nothing wrong with ignoring it completely. Rook c3. So he probably wants to double on c file. Yeah, and wait. That's exactly where uh, one of my scenarios could, could be sort of normal. So let's say bishop d7. Bishop f3. Still no threats, right? D6 would just take, so I can play f5. Bring the king to f6. Then I probably try to fight for the space at the king side as well. Um, yeah, so maybe I just play like g5, g4. Maybe it's, it is an improvement. Okay, there is definitely nothing wrong with g5 in terms of ideas, so I will play g5. Now I'll think maybe, yeah, I don't know how to play this exactly. Maybe I go a5, then a4, and knight d6. I think it's very important that I have this e4, king e5 idea in all the lines. Like there is a very big number of lines where we trade the pieces after c5 and it's important that my king is uh, close enough. Actually, maybe all the stuff I was doing was completely pointless. Maybe I should have just played a5 way earlier and it was even better, I don't know. But for some reason I liked what uh, what I was doing. Okay, so this allows 96. We'll probably go e4 anyway. The knight goes to d6, so now 94 check is a threat. He probably has to play f3, correct? And then in terms of ideas, I think we go f4 and then we go e4 at some point. So this is the way we should play this. Or maybe we just go g4, but g4 I kind of... Yeah, g4 is probably correct, but I just like this f4 plan. I think it's very stylish. So and then we go e4, king e5. And all the stuff we were doing sort of uh, sort of becomes useful. Yeah, so now we can play e3, we can also play g4 yeah g4 is a funny move okay let's play g4 yeah and f3 right yeah so now we have this uh past pawn which is obviously which is obviously nice this probably allows knight takes g3 he doesn't have moves as well, by the way, we can just play... Okay, whatever, let's take. We can only play one move. Yeah, knight is three. Rook takes c4. Knight takes d5 was also possible, but this is good enough. Yeah, normally you win the knight endings with a, with a billion on, of extra pawns. Moreover, normally you win it easily. Okay. So I'm just curious. So let's say I just give up the knight just for fun. Can I take it? I go king d6. Maybe we're still winning. Okay. I, I just want to check this. I think it should be still as for white. We just go a3, then king c5, so even this is a... Uh, is lost. Yeah, now we take on d5. Yeah. Okay, thanks for the game.
Uh, so it's actually 15 minutes left, right? So I will play probably two more games, straight at maximum. Um, okay, let me try playing the star again. So I'll pay Mr. Arimin, who is a premium, uh, a premium member, and he's uh, yeah, he's twenty seven hundred player. I think there is no increment here, so I have to, I have to play fast. So what's up? We are wasting time, buddy. It's either you play move or I abort it. Hmm. Yeah, people are uh, are discussing the the candidates in the chat and asking for uh, for my opinion. I mean, first of all, you should not really care about my opinion. It kind of has zero value. Um, yeah, in regards, I mean, in regard to, to the candidates. But my opinion is that actually, I think it's quite likely that both uh, both Nepo and uh, yeah and Vashir will will miss the first place. So I think it could be Fabi or it could be Grishuk or it could be you know well maybe not Anish but most of the rest could be even Anish actually, which would be quite unbelievable but. One day it could happen. But in general, people are discussing chances like it's, uh, you know, like it's a very big gap. But in fact, I mean, okay, let's say if you're, uh, if you're MVL, you have um, a game against Fabi uh, with black, let's say, I mean, okay, you. You get tra trapped in United of you, you lose one game, and then he uh, he is there, and you have uh, equal number of points, right? I mean, it's not that there are only like two or three guys who can win it, so it's just about one or two games, in fact. So yeah, we will see. I think I will actually work there, and I will uh, I will um, comment on it in English, I believe. So you could also follow it if you will sort of miss my stupid stories. Feel free to join it. There will also be, I think, Almir Skripchenko and Evgeny Mirchenko. And all those Russian speaking guys will comment for you guys in English. That is life. You have to take it. Okay, now I go e5, d takes f5. For no reason, pretty much, but it kind of makes sense, I believe. It's a very standard pawn sacrifice uh, to get this e4 square for the knight. And then it's, in some lines, you just go bishop g5. I don't know, f6, or maybe you sacrifice something. But in general, as I say, normally white has a lot of attacking ideas in this kind of uh, this kind of positions. I mean, I could even go knight g5 just to illustrate that. Like knight g5, b takes c3, knight takes f7. And yeah, something will happen there. Okay, let's have fun. I don't think it makes sense. I also don't think uh, I have a single reason not to play f takes g6 or knight e4 instead. But I just want to sort of show you guys that even this can be 
not exactly pointless. So what is this exactly? Beta x is three. Um, so how do we play this? We can take on g6, we can take on f7, we can also take on h7 even. Uh, it all looks kind of promising. Mm. Okay, we can definitely take on g6. And then to take on h7, right? We can also do something completely crazy like knight takes f7, f takes g6, king g8, rook f7, uh, then g takes as a threat probably. Yeah, okay, let's go for it. it once again, it doesn't feel right. I think f takes g6 was the move. But it kind of, uh, I mean, it kind of looks stylish to me. We just give up absolutely everything. Not even if, if takes g6, but just knight takes f7. I guess he will take on f7. Otherwise, we just uh, are happy to play f takes g6. Yeah, people ask people asking if I spend any time solving studies, but I normally don't do that. I think I had enough of it. I mean, I was uh, forced to solve this, the studies when I was like fourteen or something, and I still kind of hate it. I mean, there are some studies that I am happy to try to solve, and I can enjoy it, but in general, I don't think it makes a lot of sense. There is also a very big number of players who kind of so 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 a lot of studies and still uh, still fail to to calculate during the game sometimes and i think it's not exactly the same like if you so so studies you you only get better in solving studies it's not exactly related to you know to to a game of chess Also, if you're looking for uh, for a study like a solution during the game, I mean, it can only it can only harm you normally. Saying that, let's try to to, uh, to solve a puzzle here. So let's say we go knight h6 check. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. There is normally no puzzle; you just win it. Simply, I think you 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 can also you can also sort of uh, sort of get um, yeah. Let me finish this first. Is it queen h seven? Bishop g five also looks normal. G six looks normal. Okay, it's definitely fine to to include g six just to save a pawn. Then we go bishop g five. Then we bring everybody. Yeah, now rook takes f6, wins, queen g8. So what I was about to say is that you can sort of uh, get uh, uh, the wrong impression about chess solving studies. So you can start to feel like there is always uh, there is always the best move that is much better than the rest. So there is always some uh, really stylish, you know, solution, and you will always you will always uh, spend a lot of time trying to to find it but it's not exactly i mean at least in my opinion it's not exactly the way there is actually a very big number of players who were trained by the the legendary mark Goretzky, who is obviously like a great coach and everything and i'm not um, not entitled to you know uh, to say that he was wrong but i think in general so even in his case also uh, he was obviously a brilliant coach he had a very big number of pupils who play i think in a very kind of strange way so for instance when i play in Arkiv, he's obviously a very strong player but i uh, i mean i always 
have an impression that I play chess and he is just like every single move, he's just trying to solve a puzzle. Like he he he's he just looking for some brilliant solution that is just not there. I mean, it's not that his position is uh, bad or something, but I mean, sometimes you just have to play moves. I mean, there is no there is no brilliant move or it's the best move by far or something like that. So yeah, that is my pointless opinion on studies. It's also true that I'm probably just a lazy person and I'm just trying to just justify doing nothing. All right, so I can play bishop b3 here. Yeah, I guess I go to b3. It is actually, yeah, it is actually a strange position. First of all, let's point out that we are playing Liv Tyler, who is beautiful. Secondly, let's think about this a little. So there is queen f2 in many lines. A sort of tricky, black is kind of stalemated at the king side, so he, he cannot really move there. But, but I cannot really checkmate there as well. So black has to play with one queen only. But on the other hand, this queen yeah can be quite quite annoying here, attacking the pawns and everything. So yeah, we have to come up with something smart or we just give up g2 for nothing. That is also an option actually. Like what I'm talking about, for instance, here, like if you solve a lot of studies, you feel like e5 is the move and it should definitely work. You you start ca calculating the stuff like e5 takes queen g7, rook e8, you go knight e4. I mean, you have options, but in general, you f you feel like it should work. But uh, yeah, the, the, the reality is that, I mean, sometimes it just doesn't work. And uh, the studies, I mean, sometimes can uh, give you the wrong impression, you know, that all the brilliant moves work, but I mean, sometimes they don't. Saying that, okay, let's try the c5, just for those who solve puzzles and studies and the stuff. So black has to take, we go queen g7, rook f8, we go knight d5. I think knight takes d5 is kind of forced. We go queen takes d5 there. And that's what could be the solution of the puzzle. But in real life, I think it will not work somehow. Maybe knight b6 will, will save black, maybe something else. So this is uh, the point. Like normally, that's what I'm trying to show. That uh, sometimes it's just better to, to ignore it and play like a3 quickly instead of e5. So in general, in such a situation, Magnus normally plays a3 quickly, like 95% of the time. And if you go e5, I mean, okay, sometimes it will work, but sometimes it just, uh, I mean, sometimes it's, it's the best move, but if it's not the, the best move, it's really bad. It's like you are just much worse. And a3 can never be too bad idea. That's why I think Magnus approach in general is uh, sort of correct. And by the way, as far as I know, Magnus has never been exactly a fan of uh, solving puzzles. Nice to reach check. Okay, this is strange. So what is the point? Like there is no point at all, right? Okay, let's say we just take. Queen takes was also possible, but I just don't get what's... Uh... Even king a1 was possible technically, as knight takes d1 would run into queen b8 checkmate. Yeah, so queen b6. And uh, yeah, the, the point is that probably black is not completely lost yet. We are obviously much better. 
but it's not uh, it's not game over yet. Maybe we just bring the the queen back to g7, trying to stalemate him again, sort of. Rook takes d7 is the threat as well. In general, I think it will be very difficult for Black to finish the, the development here. Plays queen c6, okay, can just go king b2, I believe. Slowly but surely. And now I'll go h3. Someone in, in the chat is saying it was him who, who changed my ratings. That was funny, actually. Okay. So bishop a2 or bishop... Okay, bishop a2 is fine. Bishop e6. I'm offered a draw. I'm sorry, Lee, but, you know... Don't like draws. Bishop d7 back. Okay, let's play bishop d5. Yeah, this allows bishop takes f7, I guess. And we win. So that's normally as a, as a, as a tactic you, you have to calculate. It's not something brilliant, you know? It's just you have to be capable of... Uh, Solving something really, really simple, like check, check, takes or check, check, mate, and you win. But you don't really need to be that brilliant playing um, playing chess. And all the studies, I mean, okay, it's I mean it's fun, but it's uh, not exactly related to to the real game. You don't I need to be even half the, that brilliant during the game. I'm pretty sure we'll say if you make a competition between Magnus and Vachier in, uh, you know, in solving puzzles, I'm absolutely sure Vachier will crush him. But, I mean, Magnus is still a much better player. On that note, I think we will just finish. Uh, thanks for the game, Leaf. Thanks for the games uh, all the guys have played today and people from the chat. So thank you guys and uh, yeah, make sure to not to miss my next Bunter Blitz on uh, Chess24. That is, I think, in a few days as well. Or maybe it's some, you know, blindfold Bunter Blitz or something. Anyway, I'll be there. So make sure to, you know, spend a few, few more pointless hours with me. Thank you very much.